Mr. Montgomery, according to my court documents, you claim the defendant is a liar and you admit to poor judgment when you slept with her. There have been rumors that she is known for pinning babies on men and you open your case today because you now have doubts. You fathered her three-year-old daughter, Noriah. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Dabney, you claim the plaintiff is a weak, gullible man and is only doubting your daughter because of his meddling family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Montgomery, what was the nature of your relationship? How did you all meet? A mutual friend. There was you say it's a friend? mutual friend, mutual but... Friend. There was no like... relationship between the two of us. So how did you meet her, Mr. Montgomery? Through a he mutual inboxed friend. me on Facebook. He gave me her number. <laughs> he gave you my number. He never had my... I don't know he her. He never had my number, Your Honor. One at a time. You say a friend of yours gave you... Her number. He told so me... So what, you saw her and you said, she looks pretty, I want to have her number? No, he just told me about a girl that was easy that he used to fool with. <laughs> and so he gave me the number. I went over there. We hung out maybe once or twice. There was never a relationship. There was never His a conversation His story don't even make sense. Do you? That don't even make sense. He inboxed me on Facebook. It was like, yeah, I see how you like... I see how you doing your own thing. You keep a job. You take care of your daughter. Whoop to this, whoop to that. Boom, after all that, he ended up uh, hitting me back up. That's when I had gave him my number. That's false. We was testing for a cool little minute. Then he asked, can he come chill? I was like, yeah, you come chill. We'll go to my homegirl house and chill because I didn't want him to know where I stay at. We go to my homegirl's house and chill, talk, do this, do that. He told me he was going to pull up on me, but he didn't pull up on me. He walked up on me. Like, he didn't even have a car. That's false. He didn't have a car. I didn't have a car either. But if I'm pulling up on somebody, I'm not gonna walk to their house. So if you so, say you're gonna pull up on me, then yeah, pull he up, walked up on me. Yeah. But he walked up. Yeah, because he <laughs> didn't have a car. So after that, we chilled over my homegirl house. We chilled for a couple hours or whatever. He was like, Can you walk me to the gate? So I was like, Yeah, I'll walk you to the gate. I walked him That's to the false. gate. We sit there, we talked for a little bit. After that, he went home. I went and I went home or whatever. And then after that, we were testing like for a couple of hours, probably to like two, three o'clock in the morning. He, from the time I met him, all the way up to the time we were testing, he was asking me, give me oral sex. And I kept telling him, no, 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 no. So That's here false. it is, probably about four or five o'clock in the morning. He was like, can I come That's over false. and we can chill and we, and I can pop in this, uh, this uh, history movie. It was a black and white movie and we can, you know, chill, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'm not tripping. That's so, false. boom, he ended up coming over. That's and false. then he pops it in. We sitting there chilling. I'm on my phone the whole time because I'm not interested in no history movie. I'm not in school no more. <laughs> so, <laughs> after that, like, boom, like, an hour or so had rolled past or whatever. So, he had asked me again. He was like, can I give you some oral? And I'm like... That's false. Yeah, let's go That's ahead and do it. So, one thing led to the next. That's false. Boom, after he did that, we ended up messing around. After we messed around, he ended up spending the night. The next day, we woke I've up. I'm like, what you finna do? over her house. Like, I've then never after that, we didn't house. talk. We didn't talk for, like, another three I've to four months. And then, up. throughout them three or four months, we didn't talk. I found out I was pregnant. All right. You got me there. Take a breath. <laughs> okay? We will not accuse you of not being ready to testify, Ms. Dad. Right. <laughs> You are ready. But I want to understand Mr. Montgomery's side. I want you to respond to this, sir. You've heard the account Ms. Dabney has laid out for the court. Now, everything she's saying is false. When we, when we fooled around, I did go over there that night. There was a movie on. She wasn't interested in it. I've never offered her oral sex. Oh, my God. Before the child. I'll be specific. I never said it. Because <laughs> even, even after the child was conceived, we didn't do what we didn't did after the child was born. But before the child was born, it was a one-time thing. She told me she was pregnant. I told the mutual friend who introduced me, told me about her. He was like, bro, don't believe her. She be lying. I told her I didn't believe her. You no, inboxed me on Facebook. I That's not, not him introducing not. us. So what are you okay, talking about? Okay, but regardless, you all were intimate. Yeah. And what I want to understand is, Mr. Montgomery, did you use protection when no, you were I did intimate? Not. Okay, so you meet her, and for the first time, you say you don't even know her. You have unprotected sex with her. Yes, I did. And so then you Work say it was just a one night stand? Yes, ma'am. All right, so, Miss Dammy, tell me about the moment you found out you were pregnant. Take me to that day. What happened? Okay, so when I found out I was pregnant, I didn't tell nobody because I don't like people in my business. So I found out I was pregnant, and then I ended up dating this other dude or whatever. So then Richard ended up hitting me up one day, and then he tried to make it seem like, well, I wasn't trying to mess with you, and then just bounce on you like, 
Like we just messed around and I just left. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, oh, it's cool. Well, I found out I was pregnant like a month and a half ago. He was like, oh, for real? Well, we'll talk about that tomorrow because I guess he was doing something or whatever. So the next day we ended up talking That's on awesome. the phone. That's the next awesome. day we ended up talking on the phone and then, uh, so he was like, uh, well, you're going to have to show me some proof that it's mine. I was like, I'm not showing you nothing. You could come to a doctor's appointment with me. That's your proof right there. So then somehow we ended up getting off the phone. So I tried to call him the next day to see if you come to a doctor's appointment. He blocked me on his phone. Then I tried to contact him on Facebook. He blocked me on, con- on Facebook. So through my whole nine months of pregnancy, I didn't talk to Richard at all. Like, not even a, a test message, a phone call, no nothing. Okay, wait a minute. Did you tell this other guy? Yeah, that I he had was told the, the other guy that he was the father because he was doing for me. So I'm like, well, I'm already getting in good. So Gold if digger. I tell him Gold that I'm digger. pregnant she got by her him, hand out. For but I was already pregnant before we even got together. She looking for a come so up. So if I but said, but you told, even though you knew you were pregnant before you got with this new guy, you told that guy he was the father. Yes. Or were you truly confused about no, it? No, I knew who my baby father was. I just told him he was the father because we was together, and I didn't want him to think, you know. But it was just awkward at the time. Which I should never. So you had this other guy believing he was yes Nariah's biological yes. father, Your Honor. and he accepted it. Yes. Was he with you for doctor's appointments? No, because no. we end up breaking up. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When's the first time Mr. Montgomery even met Nariah? Naraya, okay, so I had her, and then my grandmother was like, well, you're not going to tell her father that you had her? I was like, no, because he ain't been here this, this whole nine months, so why tell him now? Then I sit up there and thought about it. I'm still in the hospital. So then I sit up there and I thought about it. I was like, okay. So I end up hitting up his brother, and I was like, well, I had a whole baby by your brother, by Richard. He don't even a know. A whole baby. A whole baby. <laughs> <laughs> I had a whole baby by your brother, and he don't even know. As if there could be a half a yeah. baby? I don't know. So don't. That, Oh, baby. Oh. That wasn't even a response. So he ended up... Of course it's a whole so, thing. Yeah. That, wasn't, that, that wasn't even a response. So I ended up... He was like, well, can you send me some pictures? I'm like, all right, cool. Sent him some pictures. So then he called me back. He like, yeah. He like, yeah. <laughs> he like, yeah, she looked just like me. She got my nose, did that, that, and the other. After that, he was like, when y'all getting out of the hospital? I was like, we're getting out of the hospital tomorrow. So after we got out of the hospital, he shot over there. He ran to my apartment and came and seen her. Was holding her for a long time. So I'm like, why are you looking at her like that? Because she looked just like me. But now all of a sudden, she's not yours just because I be telling she you. She like her Every time daughter. we get into it, she like my oldest daughter too, but she look more like you than she look like her. Look Every like time we get into it, yes, I do say she's not yours because I be so, mad so at the moment. So that's why we're here. Because, I'm, that's why we're because here. I be Every mad at the moment. But three years later, you want a paternity test? You let your family need, hype I, you I up. Need, I need my proof. You let your family hype you up. You've told that child I was dead. You've told that child I was dead. Okay, all right, all right. She's told that child I was dead. Sure did. What? Yeah. And that was I this year. I don't like him. That was this year. I don't year. like him. I but don't no, like but that, him. You still, you still don't do that to your child. I don't care how much you don't like him. Miss Dabney, you know that's wrong. You yeah, don't it tell is it. wrong, if but that, I don't. If that, you say that is your child's father, you don't tell the child. I mean, Nariah's three. Right. And listen, it's obvious you all don't care too much for one another. But, you know, unfortunately, I wish you would have realized that before you had sex and made a whole person. Right. As you would say. (laughs) You know, I wish you would have surveyed to get to know the whole person. Then you would have decided whether this is somebody I want to lay down with, make a baby with, co-parent with, and spend the next 20 years with. Because at the end of the day, that's what it is when you have a baby with somebody. Mr. Montgomery, you're saying at first you took on the responsibility, but every time she got angry, she said you weren't the dad. Yes, ma'am. People were telling you things. So then you started to doubt. At what point do you really start doubting? All the multiple times, her saying that she's not mine, when she told me that the child was dead, the text messages that I have, uh, where she told me that her and her boyfriend decided I can't see the child. The child was dead. What, are what you is this? talking about? This is from uh, me asking Miss Dad. May I see that, Jerome? That's if I can pass me that evidence. This was, oh. this was from July of this year. July. I have the message in my phone. It's put up, but I have the message And in so my phone. this evidence you submitted to the court is what? A text me exchange? A- me asking if I could talk to Naraya and her telling me that her and her boyfriend decided I can't After see her. After months, you finally asked to talk to no, her. No, that's false. I went from seeing this child every weekend on my off days for the last Not two every years. Weekend. Like I said, every weekend from seeing this child on my off days to I've only seen this child maybe six times this year. 
So you say, can I talk to Naraya? And she responds, me and my boyfriend agree on her not speaking to you. So have a nice life. Yes, ma'am. And so I need to know because this is my child. I don't want to continue playing these games with her. No, you can't play these games. He been playing games, so all of a sudden you want to see your is, child. Again, but she's not No, hard. no, I'm saying the truth is both of you all are in, in a tit-for-tat game and Naraya's losing. Because if what you say is correct, Miss Dabney, and this is her biological father, I'm telling you, she's three right now, 20 years from now, she don't want to hear no nonsense about how her mother and her father couldn't really get along and that's why she don't know her daddy. No, nobody wants to hear all that. It, and so all the stuff that adults talk back and forth about, like it seems like it's of supreme importance that you all can't stand one another and I just can't, don't even want to see him, it's childish. Your Honor. It doesn't do anything for the child. You're making her lose out. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's his child or not, but the point is, is he's established a very real relationship with the child. Because of me. And listen, because see, uh, see, I always, that's the I always she be the one who drop off. Something. I always be the one. She just off. got a car when she got a taxi. She what? just got a car when she got a taxi. I had a car. You just got that. a car. I had a car before that, you but you don't a have car. a car. But you don't have Since one. Since March. But you don't have Since, one. Yeah, my car but broke down. But I had a car way before that. Hold on, hold on. So the bottom line is, you're now at a point where you're doubting paternity. Yes, ma'am. What are your hopes? Do you hope that you are her biological father? Yes, ma'am. It's my first child. It is. Yes, ma'am. So you really want her to be your baby? Yes, ma'am. And what are your hopes today, ma'am? I can't make her stop loving him. So I have no choice but to let them spend time together. Like, I have, I still let them spend time no, together. It's don't. just when we get into it, you won't be seeing her no, probably no, for a don't. couple of weeks to a month. No, she don't. Because I, I hold, I hold been... grudges. I hold grudges for a long time. That's just me. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. even though when I do get over them, you still see her. Or maybe sometimes I won't hold a grudge. I'll still hit you up. And but like, but, a, you but a child... Her, hold on, Miss Dabney. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't, I don't know what universe you're living in. And it's upsetting me because you have so much charisma. Like, you're a beautiful woman. You have so much charisma. You're strong. You can speak confidently about... But I don't want to hear you speak confidently about some nonsense. I don't care what it is. If you say that's her daddy, she should be able to see him. But you know what? The bottom line is, is Mr. Montgomery doesn't know if he is. Well, that's He feels problem. like he's doubtful because you said to him, this isn't your child. I do too much for my kids. I'm, so I'm what's upsetting? Don't put on them fake waterworks, man. Doing this on my own. No, none of my kids want to help besides my oldest. He don't do nothing, so that's, that's why I keep my kids away from their fathers because they don't help that's do false. nothing. Why that's should false. I have my kids be around somebody that don't help to do nothing? That don't help me tears, do nothing man. at all. I that's pay fake. all my bills. That's fake. I pay all my bills. I take care of my kids. He don't have to do nothing. If I call him and be like, I'm $50 short on the, on the electric bill, oh, that ain't my house. When your but electric your got cut off, you spent the night but in my house. But your daughter stay over here. When your bills are cut off, stay over here. Your but your daughter stay over here. House. Like, every time I do call myself trying to when ask him for help, I get no help from him. You spent the night in my house when I, your I electric was no off. I get no help from him at all, that's so... A, that's, that's false. All right, so listen. This was such a great example of what I know is happening daily. And I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say this to you as well, Mr. Montgomery, from the perspective of a very strong woman, because I am strong too. Sometimes our strength becomes our defense mechanism. In the moment, she started to express a real vulnerability. I, for the last 30 minutes, Ms. Dabney, I mean, she act like she was, uh, you know, the number one leader in the fight of the Game of Thrones. I mean, this woman could not be... <laughs> no, I'm serious. The strength, the this, he ain't doing this, I'm doing this. It was all of that. The moment she showed one bit of vulnerability and said what she feels like as a mother, right or wrong, you didn't even listen to her. And I don't know what this envelope says. I'm about to get these results for you all right now. But what I do know is if we keep communicating the way we are now, Naraya doesn't stand a chance. 20 years from now, she gonna be standing here. This cycle's gonna repeat itself. And that's why we come here. We come here to break generational curses and cycles like this. So let's get to breaking. Jerome. <laughs> Thank you, Jerome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Montgomery versus Dabney, when it comes to 
three-year-old Naraya Dabney. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Montgomery, you are the father. That's your beautiful little girl and your firstborn child. That's her. Thank you. Makes you emotional to look at her now that you know for sure? Because I don't see her, man. I want to spend more. I want to be a father. I want to be in this child's life. But when she gets upset, she keeps her from... We, we're not going there. I... We're not going there. You're right. I apologize. We're done in that place. I apologize. I don't play that game because that's the game where Naraya loses. I just want to be in my baby's life. That's all. Ms. Gant, you say Ms. Bryant showed up to your son Darnell's memorial service four years ago claiming that her son Zion was Darnell's biological child. You have since formed a bond with Zion but have strong doubt your deceased son is the father. You are here, desperate for answers. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Bryant, you say the deceased was the love of your life and you want nothing more than to have your son carry his father's name. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Gant, you say your son's death has left you with unanswered questions. I have been tormented by my son's death for nearly five years now. At the time of his death, we had become estranged because we had a big argument, we weren't speaking, and I didn't know that he had been arrested, that he'd gotten sick, he had passed away and had been buried. It was five months before oh I learned any of this. And now there's this little boy who I have come to love who calls me Granny. And I just need to make sure that he is indeed my grandson and a piece of Darnell left here on earth for me to love. Miss Bryant. Yes, Your Honor. And so you truly believe Darnell is Zion's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. Explain. Well, Darnell was the love of my life. Um, we, um, we had a rocky relationship, but we really loved each other. And um, at the time, that was the only person I was sleeping with. And... But, Your Honor, I know that their relationship was, was toxic because they argued a lot, they fought a lot. I just didn't want... I didn't think they were good together. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I, me and Darnell did have a uh, rocky relationship, but we really loved each other. Like, every argument, like, we give each other space and time to think about it, and we always come back and, re you know... Um... When you say rocky relationship, does that mean you were committed and would break up, or were you ever in a committed relationship? We was in a committed relationship, um, but he did his thing, but I never cheated on him. Because I always... We had this daughter together, our older child, and I someday wanted us to be a, you know, a family. So... And so tell me what happens when you found out you were pregnant with Zion. Um, I found out I was pregnant. Um, I didn't know he had passed away. During my pregnancy... I had to go through it alone because I, I, I didn't know that I would never see him again. The last time I seen Darnell is when I told him that I was pregnant and he said he knew. That was the last time I seen Darnell. And he said he knew? He knew. And then when I... I understand. I know it's hard. And when I found that he was deceased, <laughs> I was about to have my C-session and it's a, um, a health department across the street from the hospital. I had to go to the health department to get a death certificate. That's when I knew that he had passed away. How did you find out he had passed away? Um, child support had sent me a letter saying that he was deceased. So but I you called... didn't tell me any of this. I didn't... You didn't tell me any of this. You didn't know... I didn't know that you knew Darnell was dead. I did, and I tried to get in but contact with her daughter. But you just said you got in contact I got in contact so with her daughter. So you knew he was dead before I, got I did. In, I got in contact with her daughter on Facebook. The day that I found out, I got on, con on Facebook, and I mentioned her. 
I don't have want... social media, so I I just miss... want to understand, Ms. Bryant. Yes. How did you find out that Darnell had passed From away? From child support. So you got a letter? Yes, that was like a month before I was about to give what birth. What did the letter say? The letter a said month that he was deceased. before you gave birth would have been March. I didn't learn until April that he was dead. How can I, did I get not it? get... I didn't even get a copy of his death certificate. How can I the get it? The first time I saw it, she had it. Which Your means Honor. she already knew that he was dead. She didn't let my daughter know. She didn't Your let Honor. me know. Your Honor. Well, hold on. I want to understand this. Were you not speaking? Did, did you even know she was pregnant? I no. didn't know she was pregnant. And, and that's another thing, Your Honor. If she was having another child by my son, why wouldn't she let me know? She Your knows. Your Honor. I love, I love my granddaughter. With her. And I would do for them just like I do now. I do for both children. All right. Continue. I had an opportunity to bond with Zion. And I love that little boy with all my heart. Honor. I just need to know for sure that he's a piece of Darnell left here on Earth. Your Honor, for I'm me not here to, love. to argue. I'm here to just get my son his father's last name. Why didn't you reach out to tell Miss Gant I'm pregnant? Why, why? Why didn't she know? Why was this a secret? It wasn't a secret. I had things going on with me. I thought Darnell was coming back to tear his own family. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. But I know without a shadow of my doubt, uh, doubt in my heart that this is this man's son. And I hope that, that and he I know, is and his I, son, And I'm not here to argue I really do. Can't. And it doesn't matter. Let, let me it say this. It and do Ashley, you know this. I love Zion. I'm grandma to Zion. And Zion needs a granny. And he has one. And so, Ms. Gant... Ms. Gant, I, I need to know when you found out <laughs> Zion was born. When did you find that out? I didn't know Zion was born until Ashley came to the house while we were planning Darnell's memorial service. But when Ashley showed up to the house, she had this little newborn. And I'm like, <laughs> Ashley, you know, and she told me this is... Darnell's son. And she's telling me this is my grandson. And I'm just in shock. I don't know what to think. But when I looked at him, I didn't see Darnell. And then I'm like, I started counting because I just found out from the information my daughter had gathered what happened, the course of events leading to my son's death. And so you started counting what, the dates? The dates. And you didn't believe those dates matched up? They didn't match up. He was arrested in August. And I, con I conceived in June or July. But, but he was June. born in April. As and August to April so, is nine months. So, as Ms. Bryant, I do want to understand from you. Yes. So for nine months, you're pregnant and you just don't reach out at all. What was your delay? What was your reason I why you weren't coming? I had things going on and I didn't know that he wasn't coming back. But my son was gone. And, and you knew. I that didn't have know. Been a, How a did I know? When on. I knew, I told you and your daughter. You didn't told tell your me daughter. anything. The police I, told me what happened to my Please. son. Please, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not arguing, okay, but, okay, Ashley, even, but what even, you're even saying doesn't still. make sense. If you didn't know for two weeks you had the death certificate and you didn't know he had passed away, any mother's logical question is, is and I why didn't you find me? And I just, want, I just want her to know. That's why I'm here. I'm here for her to reassure her because I know who my baby father is. I'm here for her, not me. I'm here for Zion. I'm here for Darnell. I'm not here to argue with nobody. I'm here for my Actually, son. This is where well. she it's is for her. It's not an argument, but I have questions. And, we, that's and why I feel we like here. I have and so the right that's why to we here. Ms. Bryant, during the time that you and Darnell were off again and on again, yes. and back and in and yes. out, yes. were you seeing anybody No, else? I was not, Your Honor. So that entire time, you never had a sexual relationship with anybody No, else. I did not, Your Honor. There were people in the neighborhood he, uh, that said that she was messing around with other guys in the neighborhood. <laughs> that, that was one of the reasons that caused their final that, breakup. And they outsiders. told you she had been 
having sex or having a relationship with somebody else. Yes, because he was already in another relationship with another young woman. I thought they were done. I didn't know that they were still, still sleeping with me. together. And I didn't know that. You didn't want me around, so he had to No, I didn't want you around, but I wanted the baby around. Because of you. So he had... No, it wasn't because of me. It was because of you. It wasn't because of you. That was the only reason why he was in a relationship, because you wouldn't want me around. And so, Ms. Gant, I want to ask you. You say you have a relationship with Zion. I do. You say you love this little boy. I do. And it is... Is it your hope to continue that relationship? Yes, I'm going to continue that relationship. That is my Z-Mac. I love him. And I'm his granny, and I'm going to be his granny regardless. This is just a piece of information that I need to put this to rest. But I do have to ask you, if, in fact, it is determined that he is not your biological grandson. Have you prepared yourself for that? Have you thought about that? I have, but the love I have for this little boy is greater than that. Because regardless, he's going to need me and I'm going to need him. This is a piece of information that I need for my sanity. I didn't even realize that I still have the wounds that I have from my son's death. I do, too. Your Honor, that's He'll why I'm He'll never here. know. There's too many nevers in this situation. This little boy will never have his dad. My son never knew. It's time to put the nevers to bed and move on. Well, we are just about ready to go to the results, but I want to say this. You would not have come here today if the issue of paternity the issue of biology was not important to you. Exactly. And while I appreciate and and truly admire the fact that you've committed yourself to be Zion's grandmother, whether the result is, is in your favor or not, I do not want to underestimate the importance of determining this and the fact that if this was something you could just sweep under the rug and you didn't care about you would just have never come. Exactly. So it is important. So I do not want to have you come all of this way and only to say it doesn't matter. Because the truth is, it does. It does. It does. And your hopes today, Ms. Bryant, what are your hopes? To have Zion to have his, his father's last name, which is Harvey... And you couldn't give him that last name? I could not. Even with the death certificate um, at hand, they still wouldn't let me do it. And so you would like Zion to have his father's last name? Yes. I will. And I want that as well. I mom. would. Okay. That's why I'm here. She here for her son. I'm here for mine. I'm here for all of us. This is, this is painful for all of us. All of us. Yes, it is. And... I think I've heard sufficient testimony and I'm ready to get the results. I'm ready to, Your Honor. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Because there wasn't a blood card available to test the DNA of the deceased, Darnell Harvey, We performed a DNA test with his surviving parent, Eleanor Gant. With that being said, the results determine if there is a viable relationship between the child, Zion Bryant, and Eleanor Gant. In the case of Gant versus Bryant, when it comes to four-year-old Zion Bryant, It has been determined by this court. The percentage of relatedness between Eleanor Gant and four-year-old Zion Bryant is... 98.6% you are related. I told you, I told you, I told you. <laughs> I had to know for sure. I had to know. 
I love you. I love you too, baby. Feels good to know for yes, sure. Yes, because when I had Zion, it was like I was there by myself through the C-section. It was like light came over me and I knew it was done to hell. I knew, I knew. <sighs> I didn't have sex with nobody else besides Darnell. We know, and we can move on. And, and I just thank you, and I thank this court for the work that you do. And I can rest, and I know that and my can son I say can one rest thing to Ms. Gantz? I apologize that I didn't tell you sooner, but I Baby, was scared okay. because I thought he was coming back. We all did. We all did. And that's fine. I forgive you. And we just have two beautiful babies that we have to work together yes. to give them the best life that we can. Yes.